Hello and welcome to How to Play Carcassonne. The game is played with two to five players. To play, you will need the Carcassonne board game. The newer versions of Carcassonne include 12 river tiles and five abbots. These components can be used to create additional options during gameplay. For this explanation, these components will be set aside and just the core game will be explained. There are 72 tiles that will be used. One of these tiles is the start tile and has a darker shaded back. The start tile is placed in the middle of all the players. The rest of the tiles are shuffled and placed face down in draw piles. Each player is given 8 meeples of the same color. Any unused meeple colors are set aside. The scoreboard is placed on the table and each player in the game will place one of their meeples on the zero space of the scoreboard. The object of the game is to score points. Points are scored throughout the gameplay and at the end of the game based on how tiles are laid and where a player places their meeples during gameplay. During gameplay, players will take turns. A turn consists of up to three actions. A player will start their turn by drawing one tile and will add it onto the landscape. To add a tile to the landscape, the touching sides must align. Roads must connect to roads. Open cities must be connected to open cities. And open farmland must connect to open farmland. Here player one plays the drawn tile to connect two city landscapes. The second action a player can take is to place a meeple onto the tile they just placed, but is not required to. Meeples can be placed onto a road, a city, or a monastery. Mm -hmm. Player 1 places one of their meeples onto the city. The final action that is taken on a player's turn is to score points for any completed feature. Since there are no completed features on player 1's turn, there is no scoring action. Play moves left to the next player to take their turn. Player 2 starts by drawing a tile and adding it to the landscape. Player 2 will decide to place a meeple on the road. Players will continue to take turns until all the tiles are drawn and played. When a feature is completed by a tile being laid, any meeple in the completed feature is scored for. A city is completed when there are no gaps in its surrounding walls. Here player 1 plays a tile that completes a city. When a city is completed, each tile in the completed city is worth 2 points. Player 1 scores 6 points for being in this completed city. When a feature is scored for, the meeple is taken back by its owner. Any tiles in a completed city with a coat of arms is worth an additional 2 points each. A road is completed when both ends of the road are closed. A road can be closed by running into a village, a city, a monastery, or the road loops onto itself. Here player 2 places a tile that completes a road. A player will score 1 point for each tile of the road. Here player 2 scores 3 points and takes back their meeple. A monastery is completed when it is completely surrounded by other tiles. Here player 2 places a tile that completes a monastery. A player will score 1 point for each tile surrounding the monastery and a point for the monastery tile itself. Player 2 scores 9 points here and takes back their meeple. The tile placed by player 2 also completes a city that player 1 is in. Player 1 will score 4 points for the completed city and takes back their meeple. Play will continue with player 3 drawing a tile. A player cannot place a meeple on a feature that is already occupied by another meeple. But multiple meeples may end up on the same feature based on how the tiles are placed. Here red and blue are on separate roads, but tiles can be placed to connect the roads. If players have the same number of meeples on a completed feature, both players will score for the feature. Here two reds and a blue are on separate cities, but a tile can be placed to connect the cities. If a completed feature has multiple meeples on it, 
Only the player with the most meeples on it will score the feature. After the last tile is placed, the players will score for all incomplete features on the landscape. The roads and monasteries are scored the same way as in the game, with one point being scored for each tile in the incomplete feature. An incomplete city will only score one point for each tile in the city and one point for each coat of arms symbol. If a player's score goes over 50, the meeple on the scoreboard is laid flat when it reaches the zero space on the scoreboard. Once all incomplete features are scored for, the player with the most points wins the game. The game can also be played with farmers. A farmer is created by laying a meeple flat on the green field segment of a tile. Fields are divided by roads and cities. Farmers are not scored for until the end of the game, so they will not be able to return to a player's supply during game play. A farmer scores three points for each completed city touching their field. Here, Blue will score six points for the two completed cities touching their field. That wraps up how to play Carcassonne. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and find more game tutorials by subscribing to the channel, Gather Together Games. Thanks for watching.